the amazing body systems. It's time to go to work in Los Angeles, California. From above, you can see traffic flow on the super highways toward the business districts near downtown. Tonight, it will flow back to the homes in the suburbs. You have a super highway in your body, too, your circulatory system. It moves what you need and what you are done with to their destinations in your body. One of your main needs is the oxygen in air. Your circulatory system picks up oxygen every time you breathe using another body system, the respiratory system. But what is a body system? Our bodies are made up of cells. When similar cells work together, they are called tissue. Tissues that are together and work for one purpose are organs. When a group of organs function together to do a job, they are a system. Every body system has a specific task that keeps you alive. A single system can't do it alone. They all work together. Let's look at two, the amazing respiratory and circulatory systems. Breathing life into the body, the respiratory system. All humans breathe. We breathe when we are playing, walking, watching TV, sleeping. In fact, if we stop breathing for a long time, we will die. The respiratory system oversees breathing. Breathing brings in oxygen with every inhale and gets rid of waste with every exhale. This exchange of gases is called respiration and happens all the way down to our cells. Every cell in your body has a job to do. These different jobs help you walk, run, digest your food, build, and even sit down. To do this work, cells need energy. They use oxygen to ignite the fuel made from food for energy. This process makes waste like carbon dioxide and excess water. Did you know that plants are actually our partners in this gas exchange? We need oxygen and get rid of carbon dioxide. Plants need carbon dioxide and get rid of oxygen. In this way, we help each other. The organs of the respiratory system. The main organs in your respiratory system are the lungs. This is where the gas exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide take place. Other organs in the respiratory system include the nose, trachea, and diaphragm. Through the nose, air enters and exits the body. If it is difficult to breathe through your nose, air can also enter and exit through the mouth. The trachea is a tube that carries the air from your nose or mouth to your lungs. It is sometimes called the windpipe. When you breathe, the muscles in your abdomen, like the diaphragm, contract and relax to pull air in and push air out of your lungs. The heart and blood also play an important part in making sure your cells get oxygen but they are not technically part of the respiratory system. They are part of the circulatory system. From inhale to exhale, and all points in between. It all starts in the nose. When you inhale, air enters your nostrils. Here, tiny nasal hairs help keep dirt from entering your body. Your nose also has mucus in it. This works with the nasal hair to capture dirt and keep out unhealthy particles from the air. Mucus captures the particles and then dries around it and hardens. This keeps the dirt from ending up in your lungs. Hmm, so that's what boogers are. When your body takes a breath, the muscles in your abdomen contract and the diaphragm drops down to make room for your lungs to expand. You inhale. Typically, you inhale through your nose close to 20 times every minute. But when you have a cold or a lot of mucus, Sometimes this is really hard to do. In this case, you often have to inhale through your mouth. Once inside, there are two tubes, the trachea and the esophagus. The trachea, or windpipe, carries the air you breathe, while the esophagus takes food from your mouth to your stomach. In your throat, there is a flap of tissue called the epiglottis. When you swallow food, the epiglottis covers the top of the trachea 
so the food doesn't go to the wrong place. It then uncovers the trachea when you breathe to let air into your lungs. So, air travels down the trachea and splits into two different tubes called the bronchi. The bronchi connect the trachea and the lungs, the main organs of the respiratory system. The lungs are found in your chest, behind your ribs at the end of your trachea. They take up almost all of the space there, especially when they are full of air. Your left lung is slightly smaller than the right lung, so that there is room for your heart. Your lungs are like thousands of tiny balloons inside one big sack that all fill with oxygen and other gases you inhale. They are pink and look and feel almost like a sponge. This is because they are made up of lots of teeny tiny tubes called bronchioles. One bronchiole is as small and thin as just one of your hairs. Each bronchiole then connects to an even smaller sac called an alveoli. These tiny sacs fill with air every time you inhale. Every alveoli sac is surrounded by very small blood vessels called capillaries. Here, your blood cells exchange gases. They drop off carbon dioxide and pick up a fresh supply of oxygen. When you exhale, the muscles in your abdomen relax and your diaphragm moves back up. The carbon dioxide and leftover air are pushed back through the bronchial, up the bronchi tubes, up the trachea, and back out your nose. This exchange of gases happens every time you breathe. Did you know that the average person usually takes 21,600 breaths in a day? Keeping the system healthy. Keeping your respiratory system healthy is very important. The most important thing you can do to keep your respiratory system healthy is to never smoke. Smoking puts poisonous chemicals right into your lungs which cause many serious illnesses, like cancer. Many different diseases cause your body to make extra mucus, like a cold. These can be spread through the air, so it is important to cover your coughs and sneezes in the right way to keep from spreading cold and flu germs. They can also be spread by contact. That's why it's important to wash your hands so you don't spread or pick up germs and put them in your system when you handle food or even rub your eyes. Exercising is also very good for your respiratory system. When you do a lot of walking, swimming, or running, your lungs take in more oxygen. Since they are taking in more oxygen, every cell in your body is getting more oxygen too. This extra oxygen gives your cells more of what they need to do their jobs. Exercising is not just good for your respiratory system, it's also good for another system in your body, the circulatory system. You've seen how the respiratory system brings oxygen into your body and gets rid of carbon dioxide. But it is the circulatory system that brings blood to every cell to make that exchange. The oxygen and waste are carried by your blood through a superhighway of blood vessels to every cell in your body. And your heart is the pump that powers this system. To get a better idea of where your heart is and how big it is, make a fist and place it right in the middle of your chest. Your heart may seem small, but it can move a lot of blood. An adult heart pumps nearly 2,000 gallons of blood every single day. So how does your heart move all that blood? It beats. The heart. The heart is made of special muscle tissue, cardiac muscle. Muscles become shorter, they contract, and relax to make things move. The heart has four chambers that sit on top of each other. The two top chambers are called the atria. When you are talking about one, it is called an atrium. The bottom two chambers are called ventricles. The right and left sides of the heart are separated by a thin wall of muscle, called the septum. Right before each beat, the atria relaxes and fills with blood. One side holds the blood coming from your body, 
and the other side fills with blood coming from your lungs. When the atria contracts, the blood is pushed down into the relaxed ventricles. When the ventricles contract, this blood is pushed out back to the body and lungs. The blood that goes to the lungs drops off the waste it carries and picks up fresh oxygen, then circulates back to the heart to be pumped out to the rest of the body. The blood only flows in one direction because of valves. It can't go backward. Ever wonder what the doctor is listening to with that stethoscope? He is listening to the heart valves close. There are four main valves in the heart. The mitral and tricuspid valves let blood flow from the atria to the ventricles. When those valves close, the doctor hears a lub sound. The aortic and pulmonary valves let blood leave the heart to go to the rest of the body. When they close, he hears a dub sound. With each beat of your heart, he is hearing lub dub through that stethoscope. Blood vessels. Blood vessels are tubes of different sizes that carry the blood all through your body. There are three types of blood vessels, arteries, veins, and capillaries. Blood coming from the rest of your body leaves the heart via the pulmonary artery and heads to the lungs. When the blood gets to the lungs, it drops off the waste to be exhaled and picks up oxygen before it circulates back to the heart to be pumped to the entire body. An artery called the aorta carries blood away from the heart to the rest of the body. It has already visited the lungs, so this blood is full of oxygen. There are approximately 250 different arteries that go into every part of the body. The arteries become smaller and smaller and connect to capillaries. Capillaries are teeny tiny tubes that reach out to each and every cell in your body. They let the oxygen and good nutrients pass to the cells while they take on the waste products. Capillaries connect the smallest arteries and the smallest veins, sort of like a bridge. Veins carry blood back to the heart. This blood is full of waste products, including carbon dioxide. Then it's pumped back to the lungs and the whole process continues. Just like the arteries, there are more than 250 veins in the body, but veins are not as flexible or thick as arteries. If you stretched all of your arteries, veins, and capillaries together, they would stretch from California to New York about 24 times. Blood. Every part of your body, even the smallest, is nourished by blood carried in either a capillary, vein, or artery. That's why a cut anywhere on your body will bleed. At least one of those blood transporters gets cut. Red blood cells get their red color from oxygen. Once they drop off the oxygen to the cells, they lose their red color. Their hands are free, so to speak, to pick up any waste products from the cells, such as carbon dioxide. Red blood cells only live about 120 days, so half of the body's red blood cells are new every single week. New red blood cells are made in the marrow of bones, in the liver, and in the spleen, found next to your stomach. Your blood also has white blood cells. These are your body's defense system and attack invaders, also known as germs. These white blood cells keep you healthy and fight off any infections. There is also a clear liquid in your blood called plasma. Plasma contains water, salt, protein, sugars, and leftover oxygen from the red blood cells. When you are cut, Another agent in your blood is called in to stop the bleeding. Platelets work with other tissues to form a clot, a sort of patch for your cut blood vessel. The blood cells trapped on the outside of the clot dry out and form part of the scab you see when you are healing. Below the scab, the blood vessels are healing, but it all starts with the platelets. Keeping the system healthy. A healthy diet is the most important factor in keeping your circulatory system healthy. So avoid fatty foods. If you don't, your blood vessels may become blocked. This can cause life-threatening injuries to your heart, lungs, and brain. 
Fill up on fruits and vegetables. Build meals around low-fat meats or beans. Choose whole grains when you eat bread. And keep your system flowing with 8 to 10 glasses of water a day. It is also important to work your heart to keep it strong. It's your hardest working muscle and it needs exercise to stay strong. Your life depends upon it. Try to get at least 60 minutes of exercise every single day. And think safety. Use safety equipment and follow all safety rules so the blood you have inside stays inside. Review. The respiratory system brings oxygen into your body and expels waste. It works with your circulatory system to make sure your cells get the oxygen they need to do their jobs. The major organs involved in the respiratory system are the lungs, but there are many different muscles and other organs that also help. Breathing begins with the nose. From here, air moves down the windpipe and into the lungs. The lungs take the oxygen out of the air and delivers it to the blood that has circulated to the lungs. As the blood travels through the body, it delivers oxygen to all the cells and picks up waste products like carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide travels back to the lungs where it is exhaled out through the nose. Then the process begins all over again. Exercising and not smoking are the most important things you can do to keep your respiratory system healthy. The circulatory system circulates. It delivers oxygen and nutrients to every cell in your body and takes away the waste cells make as they work. Your heart, blood vessels, and the blood that travels through them make up your circulatory system. Blood is made up of plasma, red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. Blood carries oxygen and nutrients to all of the cells in the body and picks up their waste products. The life-giving exchange of oxygen and waste products happens between the respiratory and circulatory systems with every breath you take. Exercising, eating right, and being safe are the best ways to maintain a healthy circulatory system. No one system can keep your body healthy and alive. They all work together, and they are amazing.